Not a bad place to work. You might recognize this gentleman with me right here. I'm standing oh. in the studio of Mr. <laughs> David Kay. No one knows who I am. Mr. Uh, David Kay, you're uh, just behind the scenes. Yeah, you're behind just... the scenes, under a table, <laughs> <laughs> behind a door. <laughs> We've been on the subject of travel. I just did a tune-up to your travel rig, but you came yep. back from a lot of travel. Tell us about your experience of trying to pull off gigs well, while it... you're traveling in... Japan? Was, yeah, Japan this time. I just uh, preface that by saying I remember when you and I first started working together years ago, or maybe before that, I remember traveling with a massive rock and roll case. Like it was with the Zephyr and the thing, we had to ship it, and there was pro it was just, I want to think about that now. It's it's laughable because this time, I've just, we have this, the, the tri booth we use uh, when I can ship if I'm going to be in a, pos a place for quite a while. Yeah, that's the ship it, leave yes. it for a week or two. Yeah, and leave it there, you know. Yeah. And we go to wine country and play our place there we bring it up and it's there it's yeah. my studio yeah but for times when we're going to be going away this used a lot of travel and japan multiple had, hotels multiple yeah, locations multiple, travel by train all the time probably. Train. yeah by train and so yeah. i'm not going to bring a big case and lug it around especially japan right. it's just there's no way and i s went to you and i said how can we do this so i have my little road gear with the laptop i get the apollo the preamp the cords and the cool thing about you added c-suite to my software. Yeah, and so when I, I put that... I have it running on the machine. Yeah, it's on the, the so. C-suite. So when I use that, mm -hmm. we were in a hotel and, and I had a, a animation auditions to do. I had to talk like, you know, hey, hey. And I had to yell and, and I had the, the trailers, which is down in here. I was all over the map. I was left alone by most of my clients, which was nice. But for two weeks, all I did was use the clamp that you fashioned. This, oh, uh, you brought this, that uh, with you, yeah. Yeah, so that's all I use. I clamped it on to a, like a lamp or a little thing in the desk. And as an extender, the mic I use, the Townsend Labs yeah, right, right, right. Uh, emulator, which is a, you know, it's a little it's a pretty mic. chunky it's mic for travel. for travel, but it's it emulates, and it's a good quality mic. And it like, emulates it this mic. That's yeah, the Peluso. Key. It's real close. Peluso I don't get anybody calling me saying, hey, well, are you traveling? I get none of that anymore. <sighs> and with the, so, so I had a small kit. I took the Townsend Labs mic kit with everything in it. Yeah, this yeah, case here? Yeah, well, that was it. I took it on the airplane so with me. everything in there. And then the Apollo, I put in my carry-on bag. But it's no problem. So that, I went everywhere. I used the C-suite stuff. And I was able to do all the auditions. I said, hey, how's it sound? Sounds great. Okay, good. So no matter where I was, hotel rooms, easy setup, takedown. Within five minutes, I'm recording something. Wow. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, Japan was a no-brainer. It was easy. Now I know. That's so, great. I love, yeah. I, that's why I love working with you, because you like traveling. You like trying... You're not too yeah. afraid to go into new frontiers and try new things. I've used every element <laughs> of gear and configuration that we've ever done. It's true. Ever. It's true, man. <laughs> it's I recorded a session in the bathroom in Beppu, Japan, on the east coast where all the onsens are, the, the steam, in a, in a beautiful hotel, but it was in a bathroom. I clamped it up, did the thing, put closed the doors, and I thought, that sounds really good. And I had an important session, and no one knew the difference. They didn't know. So. It's nuts, right? Yeah. It's a testament to your talent, but also the ability to tune this technology. Yeah, I to love get it. The, to get rid of room ambience, room echo, yeah. control the environment, make the mic sound like the mic you have at home. <laughs> yeah. got to sound pro on the road, pulling, period. You're pulling a rabbit out, out of the hat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is essentially what David was running. He was running the Apollo console. There's a few plugins used. So we need to have the Sphere plugin. This interprets the audio out of this mic, runs it into both the front or the left and the right channels, which is actually the front and the back of the mic. And that comes into the plugin. The plugin decodes that signal creates the polar pattern of choice, which I have set to like a hypercardioid. And then the model of the mic that he's using to emulate what he uses at home is what they call the 67. It's really supposed to be a Neumann 60, U67. So that's what's going on with Sphere. Then after the, the Sphere plugin decodes that signal into a single mono signal, it goes through channel strip. And all we're using this for is a little bit of EQ because we brighten up the top end just a bit and a little bit of compression, um, a, a two to one compressor, just to control a little bit of the peakiness. So then here's the magic sauce, right? So this is something we just set up today, which I'm excited about trying. 
We're using CVOX as he was describing, but this plugin of CVOX is doing one job and that is reducing ambience. So it somehow listens to the room and figures out what is reverb and what is not reverb and tries to reduce reverb. Then we have another version of CVOX running and this is just doing attenuation of noise. So this is set to noise. That's what's interesting about this plugin. It only can work in one of two modes. It can only be noise or room. And I was like, how do we get both? How do we get the best of both worlds? Run both plugins. So that's what we're trying now. And so it just takes what he was doing in Japan to another level because he can also now control more room reverb right here in this virtual channel strip. And we're doing this all with the base model Apollo. This is a solo. It only has one DSP chip. It's not that powerful. And down here, you'll see this little blue bar indicates we are using almost 100% of its little power. It's still able to manage and run these four plugins in a row. Just pushing the frontiers of what we can do in a portable kit. Thank you, George. You're a black belt of recording. Master. I am a black belt of black belts. Yeah, I'm working <laughs> on my other degrees now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, David. <Yeah. laughs>